Okay, everybody. This is um, a very small wind turbine uh, capable of producing uh, about 12 volts out at winds less than uh, 15 miles an hour. I'm going to take you through a series of photos here, about 28 photos. that will show you the uh, development I went through over a course of uh, a few months uh, to de develop the, the blades, uh, the electronics, and then putting the whole thing together. The first month I spent um, with the development of the blades. Here you're seeing 24-inch uh, blades made from a 6-inch PVC pipe. Uh, unfortunately, it took about uh, 15 to 20 mile an hour winds to get this thing spinning. So I had to come up with uh, a different system. Next, what I tried was a very small, lightweight set of blades. And these things spun at around uh, 2 to 5 miles an hour. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't hold together very well. They only lasted about uh, two days, and they just <laughs> they fell all apart. Uh, but what I was able to do uh, was a side-by-side -side comparison of the small blades to the large blades, and I will watch the uh, wind speed, and then um, it gave me a new idea, uh, an idea to use the smaller blades, but maybe something, um, use a material that was more um, more rugged. So I ended up uh, using roof flashing, and I fashioned these blades. These blades are um, 16 inches long, and they're made from uh, just standard aluminum uh, roof flashing. Uh, you have to bend the edges to stiffen them up, but once you do, they, uh, they work pretty fine, and they hold up pretty good, too. Um, these held up for quite a bit uh, through some storms and everything, so they're pretty good. Okay, the next month I spent developing the alternator and the electronics. Uh, here you're seeing the uh, alternator. It's a uh, three-phase alternator uh, consisting of uh, eight magnets and 12 coils. There are four coils per phase. It's three-phase, so that gives you a total of uh, 12 coils. The, uh, the gray uh, backing material is just plastic wood. It's plastic planking. I got a, a Home Depot and I cut that down in size and the uh, center uh, piece is out of a tape deck uh, it's the, uh, the the bearing is from a uh, an old 8-track tape deck the uh, idler motor you'll see that you'll uh, see that in more detail later uh, I'm using standard Singer sewing machine bobbins to uh, to wind the coils and you don't have to count the uh, the turns just load them up to about the same capacity and they're all uh, uh, pretty uh, equal. Here you see the uh, magnet set up. It's in uh, plexiglass. Um, I drill half inch holes. Those are half inch rare earth magnets. I uh, dr uh, drill half inch holes and they uh, met the magnets fit uh, very snugly in those holes. And I sandwich some uh, metal washers behind them because that directs the magnetic energy towards the coils. You get more efficiency that way. And as you can see, the centerpiece is uh, is from an old tape deck. That's the like the idler um, the idler wheel out of a tape deck, and that works makes for a very good bearing. And I sandwich the uh, washers in between two pieces of plexiglass. Okay, now. I spent considerable time uh, on the bench um, optimizing, experimenting with the uh, the coils, the, the, the size of the wire um, for the coils, um, the uh, magnets, how many magnets to use, the size of the magnets. Uh, here you see um, standard uh, Singer sewing machine bobbins uh, mounted on uh, quarter inch dowel pins. Uh, the backing material is uh, plastic uh, wood planking from Home Depot. Everything I, I got from uh, Home, Home Depot and uh, the bobbins and things you can get on eBay. Um, again, the centerpiece is out of a tape deck. It's the idler bearing out of an old 8-track. Yeah, what I did was, uh, here's the uh, setup uh, with the, uh, the magnets, the rotor, uh, all assembled. And what I can do is I can spin that wheel and monitor the output uh, waveforms using a, an oscilloscope uh, to see how much voltage output I'm getting. 
uh, for the different configurations of um, metal backing materials, washer sizes. Here you're seeing a, uh, a close-up view. Uh, the trick here is to get those magnets as close as the coils as possible without them actually hitting the, uh, the bobbins. The closer you can get, of course, the higher the voltage is going to be and the more efficient it will be. Okay, now uh, in the next picture you'll see uh, basically I wired the, uh, the things to the block so I can eventually uh, uh, wire the, uh, the, the coils in the proper configuration for the three phase operation. Uh, make sure you put labels on everything and it makes the wiring very easy. Uh, I don't have a schematic here to show you but there's plenty online to, to, to see. Uh, here is the, uh, I ended up rigging up a, an electric motor to drive the rotor so I can get consistent uh, test data. So I would either run it at, uh, you know, I'd run the electric motor at either 8 volts or 10 volts or 12 volts and I was taking uh, the voltage output at the various speeds. Here's a, you can see the setup a little bit better. Um, all the way to the far right is the uh, rectifier and out to my meters and uh, very important is what load you use and I use a little uh, electric motor as a load as I'm taking my measurements and here you can see the uh, the oscilloscope measurement here you're seeing the uh, output of just one coil um, using uh, you know the eight magnets uh, that are half inch magnets it's it's not quite a sine wave so this is an undesirable effect. Those little blips, you know, it should uh, sine wave is has nice rounded tops and rounded bottoms. You see that little blip in there, and that's a result of the magnet being uh, too small. Um, I was able to experiment with the size of the wire too, and I found that going to a number 36 wire gave a much better uh, voltage output. So that was what I went. Uh, the final design went with uh, number 36 uh, wire. Here you see the output uh, when, when I increase the size of the magnets. Um, this is with uh, one inch magnets but I didn't see all that much more voltage output with the one inch magnets so uh, in the final design I ended up going with um, with two uh, three quarter inch magnets uh, you know stacked so there's a total of 16, 16 magnets in the eight, uh, eight positions Okay, this concludes the first half of the uh, presentation. If you would uh, continue to the uh, second half, um, where I talk about uh, a little bit more about the electronics, development of the electronics, uh, test measurements, and um, putting it all together. Okay, or uh, go to my website, www.htworkshop.com, and I have um, a lot more details uh, on the whole project. Okay, thank you.